Over the past 12 months, 32-bit flow audio recording devices have been getting cheaper and cheaper. Last year, we had the fantastic Zoom F3, which was a two microphone input, 32-bit float recorder that could also be used as a USB audio interface. And for 350 pounds and the sound of the preamps that you got there, it was an absolute bargain. Now, at the beginning of this year, Rode took their legendary Rode NT1 and released it with 32-bit float built into it, and they didn't even charge you any extra money for it, making that an absolute buy for so solo musicians, voiceover artists, YouTube, TikTokers, whatever you're doing, it was just a fantastic buy. It's just devices that you can plug in, hit record and go. You don't have to worry about setting your levels. You don't need to worry about if your gain's too high or too low. You can just set a level afterwards in your edit and you're good to go. But the one thing the audio community has been begging someone to make for the past couple of years is an affordable 32-bit flow audio interface. And Zoom have gone and done it and they've sent me one over for a review. This is the UAC 232. This is a 32-bit flow, 192 kilohertz audio interface. It's got two microphone inputs on the front, also some combi jacks. And I've been using this audio interface for the past few weeks and I'm seriously impressed. You're listening to it right now. Um, the microphone that I'm using is a Sheps CMC1 MK41, which I have boomed just out of shot. The reason I decided to use this microphone for this video is because it's dead flat. So you can just hear these preamps for what they do. And what they do is record a very nice, very detailed, clean, transparent sound. So I think the first thing to talk about is the look and the build quality. And I think it's very important to talk about this because although this brings fantastic sound to an affordable price point, I would say 200 pounds for the quality of these preamps is very good. I do have some issues with it. And I think that Zoom should have looked at the competition. Look what's about. Yes, you've got 32-bit float, which no one else has got, but I really don't think it's gonna be long until more audio interface companies release 32-bit devices. For me, the general look of this device, when you think about the Audion ID14 Mark II, the SSL2, the Motu M2, a device that I know people don't like because of the way that it measures, but I love the sound of it, the Black Lion Audio Revolution. They're all built like a tank. They've all got really solid headphone amplifiers on them. It's not just about having good preamps. They've got good converters all the way through from start to finish, no matter what you plug into. And I feel that Zoom's a little bit behind on this. To me, the overall build quality this plasticky look, it looks cheap, okay? It looks in the 70 pound range of audio interfaces. I know the most important thing is how it sounds, but I feel like they should have done a little bit more to it. But strangely enough, even though it looks cheap, I quite like the look of it and it doesn't blend with anything on my desk. Um, I've kind of gone for an all silver and black Mac kind of setup is what I'm doing on my desk at the moment, but I, I do actually quite like it. I do think it looks a bit quirky, but if I ever looked at this, I'd be thinking, 70 to 100 pound audio interface, even without listening, without doing a blind test. If you put something like the SSL or the Audion or the Moto M2 next to it, I'm gonna pick those devices up and go, mm, there's some weight here. Also as well, the included accessories. You get some straps for when you've got it in vertical mode and I quite like that you can put it in vertical mode. But other than that, you just get a really cheap USB cable and it's a USB-C to type A. At least they've included a cable because of the Zoom F3, you got absolutely nothing. So yeah, I suppose it's good on that sense but looks and build quality to one side. It's got some really cool features that I like about it. Combi jacks, massive thing here. I love that there's combi jacks on this. That was one of my biggest complaints with the Zoom F3 and quite a few other people on my videos that I made on that also made complaints about it. So I love that there's combi jacks here, independent 48 volt phantom power. Love that you've got both the switches there. There's also a high Z switch as well for when you plug in a guitar. Um, you've then got your headphone monitoring and your output knobs here, okay. now. The output knob's a bit loose for me. I'd like it to be a little bit tighter and smoother. The headphone knob feels just right. I'm gonna talk about the headphone amplifier in a minute because there are some issues with that. Over to the back, you've got two USB-C inputs. So you can also power this to pair it with an iPad as well, um, or like an Android device, anything like that. You've also got MIDI and then you've got your two jack outputs. So that's kind of a little overview of the audio interface. So let's talk about the 32-bit the flow and, and the quality of these preamps because it would have been really easy for Zoom just to take their H series and make 32-bit float versions of those. But they went with the F series preamps, which I think is fantastic. And I'm probably gonna bang on about that through the entire video, but I think that's absolutely fantastic. Now, one thing you'd notice that's missing from the front of this audio interface is a gain knob. 
there is no gain knob because you don't really need to set gain with this device. So that's what Zoom will tell you. Um, apparently you just plug it in and that's it, you're good to go. I think it's still very important to set your levels and set them to how you normally would on a normal audio interface. So at the moment, I'm coming in with my peaks between minus 18 and minus 12 dB. Now you can change the gain, but it's not gain, it's almost digital gain or volume. It's not a physical gain knob. Um, in the UAC232 control app. So you can adjust that to suit and you can then, it basically increases the waveform. So that's gonna be very useful for when you're recording something out live, maybe it's a Zoom call, Teams call, live streaming, all of that stuff. So you can still bring it up to a level. One thing you need to worry about with this so is 32-bit float is because all companies will tell you that you can't clip it. There's still areas where you need to worry about this. So number one is a microphone's max SPL. So if you, go past the Max SPL, which is gonna be very hard with speech, um, then that is gonna be clipped audio going in. So if you clip before you go in to the converters, it's still going to be clipped. You also need to check that your DAW, your, your audio recording software is compatible with 32-bit float, not just recording it in, but other things that it can do as well. So at the moment I'm recording on Adobe Audition, and if I record in this clip, so say I was coming at like plus 6 dB, I can't bring that back down and still not have clipped audio because Adobe Audition doesn't support that. You can import clipped audio recorded, something from like a Zoom F3 or an F6, and you can bring that down and it's fine, but you can't record directly in and clip, okay? But one of the huge benefits with 32-bit flow is if you're recording lower, you can boost it back up. There's a common mistake people make and it's a mistake that I used to make because you start learning about audio gear and then you hear people talk about hiss and microphone self noise, preamp noise, all of that sort of stuff. So what you end up doing is you record too low. So for example, if you're recording at like minus 40 dB, you would then bring it back up and you'll find that your voice is sat in the noise floor. So you're bringing all the noise up with you. And that's a little bit of an issue, but you won't run into those issues nowhere near as much with 32-bit float. So you can record this nice and low and bring it back up. So it's it's, it's, it's got some really cool features. It's not a, a, a product selling feature for me. I've never bought a device just because it's got 32-bit float. Um, but yeah, I can see why a lot of people would like it. Now over to the preamps. Preamps are super transparent, super clean. They use dual, um, dual preamps on each one. So imagine you've basically got a low preamp and a high preamp working together. So the low gain preamp is gonna pick up the very loud noises and the high gain preamp is gonna pick up the very quiet noises. Um, and the way that it switches between them is absolutely fantastic. If you wanna see some more technical stuff on this, go and check out Julian Krause's video because he obviously, as we know, he gets super geeky with it. But the way it just, you don't notice it. You do not notice that there's two preamps per input here. You don't notice that there's an issue with it. And the great thing is as well, it also works in 24-bit mode. Now, as for the Zoom UAC app, you've probably just seen some screenshots there of where you can change the gain. There's a couple of extra cool things you can do on it as well. There's also loopback, and you can also set between music and streaming. So what music's gonna do is allow you to record left and right independently into any audio device, but there's also a streaming mode, which is going to take all of your inputs and put them to mono, so you hear them out of both ears. This is gonna be useful for when you're live streaming so then people listening to you aren't going to hear it out of one headphone or one speaker same if you were doing maybe a zoom call or teams call as well it's not going to come out of one side so just use your streaming for when you're doing anything live and then the music's probably the best way to go because you can split the channels on these cool little bit of software wish they added a couple of extra features to it, it would be nice to them just to add like maybe a high pass filter or something like that. Um, again, doesn't have to be DSP on this, but even just a simple one button compressor, just a couple of little extra things. Cause you know, you have to look at Rode now and what they're doing and they've got a lot of stuff going on. They're not just microphone companies now, they're really putting into their software. So I would like to see a couple of little extra features added, even if they are, you know, not DSP, not on chip, and just something that's done by software. I think it'd be good to have. I've always, I've always just been with that. I think every device, microphone, and and uh, audio interface should have a high pass filter on it because it's just nice to cut those base the, the base frequency when you're sending your audio out live. So what don't I like about the Zoom UAC two three two? Then a couple of things. There are a couple of things that I don't like about it. I've already mentioned the build quality. I'd still love a gain knob, but I think that's just because you're a creature of habit. But the issue for me is the headphone amplifier. Now, it does sound a lot more true to life and natural than the Zoom F3, because that thing just sounded 
plain bad. That's the only thing I can say about it. But there's not enough power. There's nowhere near enough power here. Pretty much every audio interface you buy at like 200 pounds can power your 250 ohm, 300 ohm headphones. You may well decide to add an extra amplifier to it, but you don't need to. You can just go with your headphones. For monitoring with these, so with like my 250 ohm Bear Dynamics, I found I could get just enough gain out of it, but it's nothing that I want to use back for listening to music, using it as my headphone amplifier is just one device, and it's probably not enough for mixing either. Anything under 100 ohms and it's fine um, and it does a good job, but there is an issue with it. The problem is, is that there is quite a lot of hiss coming through when you use direct monitoring. And the reason is, is because if you do not have something in this secondary input that is generating hiss that comes through on your headphones. So it's really easy to get around this hiss issue. You just need to go into the UAC control app and then mute direct monitoring on the second channel. I have mentioned to Zoom that I think it'd be really good if they can do it by software that if you've got the control app open and you press direct monitoring, it mutes any inputs that are not in use because they are making a four channel version of this. And that's then gonna mean you're gonna to have to mute four direct monitors, well, three other ones that you're not using if you're only recording one microphone input. So there's the cons then. Now, should you buy this over the Zoom F3? Because you can get the Zoom F3 for a hundred pounds more now. And it's it's a really hard decision, okay? Um, it's something that I, I would find very hard to make because obviously this is a traditional audio interface and you've got the combi jacks, um, which is a massive thing and it is a hundred pound cheaper. And although there is a couple of quirks with the headphone amplifier, it does sound a hell of a lot better. But you can also use the F3 as an audio interface. And I know that's what a lot of people are gonna say, but there's some caveats with that. When you're using the F3 as an audio interface, you can't record internally, which I think is just an absolutely huge con. Because for me, if you could record internally, I would probably spend the extra money because then I've got two recordings. I've got my computer recording, like I said, Adobe Audition, I might clip and I might not be able to use that, but then I've got a recorded version on an SD card, which I can use and I can bring back down to level. Also as well, when you're using it as a USB audio interface, when you turn it on, you have to go into a menu and then you have to select it, which is a bit of a con. This is just plug and play, you're ready to go. On Windows, obviously you need to install a driver, but on the Mac, you just plug it in and you're good to go. And in fact, it's not the first USB audio interface because this is the Mix Pre 3 series, well, just the Mix Pre series, because when you plug this in, turn it on, it's straight USB audio interface. You don't need to enable anything else. So this was the first one, so this one wasn't, but this is the first cheap one. And oh, it's hard, isn't it? Really hard because with other devices like the Audion, like the SSL, like the Moto M2, you do get fantastic sounding preamps, but you also get fantastic sounding headphone amplifiers. And it's, it's, it's a hard one. It depends what you want um, and what you need. Now, because I've got the Mix Pre 3, which is a very high-end device, I would probably pick this one. I would pick this one over it. Um, not over the Mix Pre 3, over the um, other audio interfaces and its price point. And also, if you're someone that just wants to hit the record button, not worry about levels and go, I think this could be an absolutely fantastic product for you. But at the same time, if that's all you want, and you're happy with the sound of the Rode NT1, maybe the Rode NT1's a better fit for you, but the Rode NT1 doesn't have a headphone jack. So I'm just getting, I'm getting confused now and I'm probably confusing you, but yeah, fantastic product, absolutely fantastic product, fantastic sounding preamps, F-series preamps. It's the last time I say it for 200 pounds. And I don't think you can go wrong there. I would love to see when they release a Mark II version, them just up the build quality, put a better headphone amplifier on it. But, it represents good value. And I think if you're looking for your first audio interface, if you're just getting into audio recording, you want something that's super clean, that can power pretty much any microphone that you're gonna put on the market. Didn't even mention there, it's like 70 dB gain on this. No cloud lifters needed. These things can go, okay? This with an SM7B, it's gonna sound sweet. RE20, gonna sound sweet. Any microphone you plug into it, it's just gonna let that microphone do what it can do. Um, and yeah, end of video waffle as always as always a big end of video waffle but let me know what you think of the zoom uac 232 are its build quality and not so very good headphone amplifier a deal breaker for you that you can't look past even though it offers 32-bit float an amazing price point let me know in the comments section make sure you subscribe and i'll be back with some more content very soon